Moving on with the SMT2200 project, I'm starting to think a bit about cooling. So, if I am to actually get uh, any kind of decent continuous power out of this thing, uh, the original a single 92mm fan is definitely got to go. Uh, for two reasons. It's uh, a bit loud, it's not a screamer by any means, but it's a bit loud when I'd like it to be, and it runs continuously and on 24 volts. So that makes it a bit inefficient to try and regulate it, and uh, I'd rather this unit just uh, either run the fans extremely slowly or just turn them off when uh, it was just sitting more or less idle and not producing much heat at all. And uh, the basic consumption of this unit seems to be about 40 watts when it's in line interactive mode, about 70 watts when it's running as an inverter. So it's not a huge amount of power and it doesn't justify the amount of air that little fan is screaming through. So what I've done thus far is obviously remove the fan from its bracket to show you, uh, but I've rerouted a heap of cables to make room for these two 120mm fans. Now what I'm hoping to achieve is to uh, be able to not modify the air inlets which are just about here and uh, keep them stock and looking good. Uh, they are a bit restrictive and worst case I will have to install one of these fan grills in order to improve airflow but I don't think it's going to get to that because it's a quite large area grill it's uh, the equivalent of what would be perhaps a 160mm fan so it can let quite a bit of air through. So the way this setup currently is uh, intended to work is that this fan primarily stands for sucking air in from the grill generating a negative pressure somewhere around here uh, whereas uh, this fan is, works off creating a negative pressure around here and actually making sure that the air doesn't just come in through the grill take a little turn around here and go out the same way so we'll need to keep this at a low pressure zone in order for it to move further back across those electronics over this second transformer and out the back that's obviously why they made the fan in the back in order to make sure that you get airflow in through the side over everything and back out again in order to drive these fans I've constructed a little fan controller PCB this is uh, pretty much an identical copy of uh, what I put in my constant current load project except it's a bit simplified it's built around an LM358 uh, a, a standard issue NTC and a DC offset circuit in order to allow you to essentially set a threshold turn on voltage uh, at a certain temperature where the fans will just ramp up quickly this enables the fans to basically turn off at a low, low temperature and uh, spin up rather quickly when the load on the unit changes for instance it goes into battery powered mode after being on grid. I'm planning to run this off of the internal 12 volt rail of the UPS uh, which should be this little switch mode power supply in here. Uh, I have used these to power stuff before and I believe in certain models they even power the fan. Now, the two gentle typhoon fans I'm using draw about 100 milliamps uh, each when they're uh, running at full power under full load and in reality it's about 100 milliamps total that you'd have to count on in order to run them so they are quite efficient fans and they move a lot of air for their power it's a real shame that they've discontinued this series because these are just uh, they're my favorite fans ever I'd have to say so I think there's a decent chance of that uh, voltage regulator in its standard issue is going to be able to provide enough power to run them. As far as regulating uh, the speed of the fans I'm considering just placing a, the thermistor onto the actual heat sinks there. It's going to have to depend on which part gets to the hottest first because under very heavy extended runtime periods uh, the transformers might be the devices that are requiring the most cooling and if we have too much thermal contact to the heatsink compared to the transformers then we're going to have to have an issue where the transformers are burning themselves up while the heatsinks are running cool and uh, making the fans run slowly but I'm going to have to do some proper tests on that later Due to the weird space constraints inside of the unit and the weird angles the fans are made to that I'm 
going to try to just uh, friction mind them using some of this swimming tube stuff. This is just closed cell foam that you can get at a supermarket and I usually use this to dampen stuff in my car. But uh, it's quite durable, it's pretty okay with temperature, so I think it'll work quite well. An added advantage is that it also provides some uh, mechanical decoupling for a fan so I won't have any vibration travelling through the chassis and making noise. And a quite considerable amount of trial and error later, quite considerable indeed, uh, I finally got something which seems to kind of work. Uh, this has been pushing uh, about 1500 watts for the uh, best part of a couple of hours now. And uh, it wasn't easy. And uh, I can tell you right off the bat that this thing is not going to do a V2200 VA continuously because it seems to saturate the transformers pretty badly. The temperature of them just rushes away but no matter what you do and they simply do not have the capability to carry the heat away uh, from the windings into the core and then to the air. And as you can see in the multimeter here we are probing the actual windings of the transformers I've stuck two thermocouples into them and that's at about 102 degrees with two fans in there. And the course of the transformers are about uh, 40 degrees below that, they tend to sit at about 60 they have. And uh, they are actually quite well coupled to the case because this entire box is quite considerably warm. If we just uh, grab the uh, thermal gun and just have a look, and we've got about 40 degrees in the case. All over the case almost. Uh, the ambient temperature right now is about uh, 25, 26, 27 degrees because I'm dissipating 1500 watts in here. So I suppose it's doing reasonably well. I would say that it's uh, capable of dissipating, or rather capable of powering 1500 watts continuously. So what we've got going on is, uh, this is the meter that's showing the fan voltage, so the fans are maxed. I've calibrated it, the fan controller, it's got a thermocouple on the uh, fat heatsink, one of them, and uh, it's calibrated to basically shut the fans off as long as the heatsink is about 20 degrees, and it ramps off very quickly after that, since that's how this little fan controller is designed. And uh, we've got, uh, I'm going to take the car off in a moment, but we've got one fan basically sitting here, just press fit between some wiring and the case, and another one sitting back here. And uh, I tried a whole lot of fancy mounting variants for this, using phone to angle the fans and everything, but uh, uh, it seems it, ju it just works best if you have one, one fan at a right angle there, another fan going along the case there, because the rear fan is sucking air through the heatsink, whereas uh, this fan seems to be able to uh, push some air m more over the transformer, because we've got a large high pressure zone somewhere around there which just wants to get out but yeah 1500 watts continuously more or less it, I'm not entirely certain as to how well it's actually going to work since the temperature has been steadily rising uh, but it's more or less tracked with the ambient temperature so yeah I'd say that as long as this is using a sane environment that's not 26, 27 degrees warm it's going to handle 1500 watts just fine and in order to test this I of course can't power it uh, from my uh, power supply alone because that just does uh, only does 4 amps so I actually took the plunge and carried in for these 170 amp hour batteries so it's actually running with the batteries right now about 4 to 7 volts in them under 50 amps or so, I don't know, 36 amps of load. And I did some uh, calculations on the, the performance before, so we've got uh, 1723 watts going in, uh, 1445 watts out, and uh, that gives us an efficiency of about 85.5%, while losing 275 uh, 78 watts inside the units, FETs and transformers included, and uh, that was taken at just about 100 degrees transformer K temperature and about 26 degrees ambient. So, I mean, that, that's a relatively respectable efficiency actually, 85.5%, that's certainly a lot better than 
um, you'd usually get out of the uh, uh, old SUA series units with third generation smart UPS. So I'm happy about that. But yeah, this thing does run warm. The entire case is very warm to the touch. But let's just shut it down. I'm pretty happy with the results. But j j just for reference, let's just put a full 2 kilowatt load on it. This is a V2 kilowatt blower I used before and just watch the transformer temperature instantly rise. This usually just takes a couple of seconds. Yeah, there you go. It's starting to move. So those final 500 watts are but they're doable for peak power. It can probably do it to, you know, for 10 minutes or so if it's not been loaded down this heavily. But, uh, and if it's just starting ex dead cold, then it's uh, going to do it for probably about half an hour or so before you run into thermal issues. But continuously, nope, it's out of bounds. This is a 1500 watts inverter. But uh, yeah, let's get the case off. And this is what it looks like on the inside. So I've used foam to mount the rear fan. It's working quite well. And the front fan is just uh, basically shoved in there between some wiring and the case, and it's sitting quite well. Gonna make some kind of better mount for that. <laughs> Everything's warm in here. This the transistor heating actually don't run particularly warm. And this one's you know, warm to the touch, but nothing more. The low one should be running the hottest and I mean, I can easily hold my fingers on these, no issues. But we are getting giant airflow through them since most of the air running through this fan is going to go straight through those. I suppose this fan as well. The, yeah, the real issue, let's just check the temp on the transformer course. Yeah, 83 degrees there. 80 something there. These are just running stupid hot. And. Yeah. <laughs> The case of the unit is, you know, 70 degrees, so we actually have relatively good thermal coupling to the case, which is a nice, ouch, nice feature. You could potentially add a fan in the battery compartment in order to cool these, because yeah, yeah, this is just, uh, this metal is too hot to touch, definitely too hot to touch, ouch. Uh, so what we've got going on beyond that is we have I've decided to install the fan controller for easy access inside the old smart slot assembly. Uh, so it just slides in there. You can adjust the uh, threshold, to fan turn on threshold, easily without taking everything apart. And uh, I also had to move uh, this fuse holder. I moved it. This is the old holder. I moved it a couple of centimeters back in order to make uh, this fan able to fit in here. Because as you can see. It intersects there, it just wouldn't go in elsewhere, but that's not an issue, there's plenty of space to go about there. Beyond that, I've just rerouted some wiring, all of this stuff has of course been shoved all the way to the side here in order to make room for the fans, because as you can see there's, well, there's some small wiring, but it's basically clear here, and clear there, and clear under there. So the airflow is going quite unrestricted through that actually. I'm quite happy with how that turned out. There's lots of slack in the wiring in this unit, which is very, very useful. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm probably going to try and uh, do s something to kind of optimize the airflow around here because this one is just blowing straight into this uh, big square hole. Uh, probably a fair amount of air is going underneath the circuit board, which is a good thing. But I'd probably want to add some kind of little bendy plastic thing there to make the air go slightly more down towards the transformers and just turn gracefully to the rear of the case. Oh, and as a side note, the fan controller is uh, t tapping its temperature with an NTC mounted uh, straight onto the transistors here. So it, uh, this heat sinks have very small thermal mass compared to the transformers, so I prefer having the NTC mounted on a small thermal mass rather than the large thermal mass that's the transformers because that would could essentially cause uh, the MOSFETs to actually burn out if uh, the transformers heat up too slowly after the unit has been heavily loaded down just because they have such a giant thermal mass and I'd rather not burn out the MOSFETs because of that. The wisdom of the elder hackers stands true 
when faced with thermal issues, remove a side panel. And that's what I did uh, down here, in order, and uh, that basically lowered the transformer temperatures by just a few degrees, from just about 100 to 90 something. So, what I think I'm going to do about that is just uh, uh, cut a few ventilation slots here into the side panel with a grinder when the time comes around, but for the moment I think I'm just going to let this be and we'll have a look at the more or less finalised uh, fan setup. So I have now uh, drilled a couple of holes here and just uh, basically zip tied this fan to the front of the unit. Uh, I it's not really a main thing since it's basically a press fit, but it's more of a security machine in case we need to get a bump that the fan isn't going to go plop and go all wrong. He also cut this plastic air guide out just to kind of aerodynamic up this corner, which is probably going to do a bit good. I haven't actually tested whether or not it makes any difference, but I'd assume any minuscule difference it makes is going to be positive rather than negative. And I've also permanently affixed the uh, NTC to the heatsink with some white goop and finally we've got the uh, final foam mounts for the rear fan so I've just uh, taken uh, what, some piece of tubing slightly thicker than the fan and I've actually carved into it so that it will fit over the fan and uh, that will prevent it from either sliding into the heatsink there these don't get very hot, by the way, uh, for, and from sliding up, since it's going to be pressing slightly against the case there, and from moving rear in the unit by pressing towards the fuse holder there. So this fan is actually very, very well mounted. Even without the case pressing down there, it's just not going anywhere. I can really put some force onto that. I can rock the entire unit, actually. So, we are nearing completion, and I'm happy about that since I have some projects which really would need some bench space. But yeah, now I'm just going to finalise the wiring here, make this, or tuck, tuck the lead into there. As you can see, I've uh, calibrated the uh, fan controller to basically turn the fans off at uh, uh, idle room temperature. It's slightly warmer than usual in the workshop right now, so they're just kind of running just a little bit but uh, if I turn this unit on on battery they basically turn on right away no matter what since just uh, about one degree of rise on the heatsink there is uh, going to make them rub up quite considerably it's, it's about a volt or so of uh, different differential on the voltage and these uh, gentle typhoon fans are extremely sensitive uh, they work down to about two volts Right now they're probably at about 2.3 or something like that, and they're still spinning extremely slowly. Uh, these are the 1800 RPM models, so they, they go pretty you know, hefty once they get up to speed. But these are impressive fans, because even at this extremely low speed, you can hear, I, I can feel a considerable amount of air moving through here. There's a noticeable amount of air being pushed by these. And you can actually feel that coming through the back of the unit and down there if you've got the case on. So these are certainly fans worthy of a task. But yeah, I'm going to put this thing back together now, I think, and do another load test and I'll get myself around this up. And here's the finished product. It looks pretty much normal from the front and outside, save for the little comps which we've got and uh, round the back we've got a little panel that I must say I'm quite happy with so I haven't uh, mounted any fan grill as of yet since I'm going to do more work on this unit and we are missing the side panel which is allowing access to some rather lethal stuff but uh, that's going to change in the very near future, it's just the middle of an night and I don't want to start angle grinding in case someone wouldn't like the sound of it. So I'm going to do some testing on this unit now, so let's just uh, try and fire it up. Oh, 
Right, so of course run straight to the battery bank there. And we are up and running. Drawing, yeah, the same old 1.3 amps at idle. It's 60 70 watts, so well, let's get the 1500 watt heater going. That'll even make some noise actually. This thing is running a lot more quiet than ever. It's down on the floor and we didn't have the big wooden bench resonating with the 50 hertz transformer. Really? We've just got a slight little whistle going on and we're drawing about 34 amps. Giving us yeah more than 15 minutes on these batteries. 1500 watts, 66%. And I'm pretty certain it's going to do this quite continuously. And if we dive back here, we've got some air coming out. The fan is spinning up just as you'd expect it to, or rather, just as I programmed it to. And we've also got quite considerable air flow coming out here. It's a almost 50-50 split. But the air flow going the lower path is going to travel probably over there, a more round the transformers rather than over them. Which is a very good thing. There you have it. 1500 watt inverter. Thank you for watching. Cheerio. Uh...